Welcome to Israel Update. As you know, we want to bring you the latest news as it's happening, specifically concerning the land of Israel. And something massive that's just happened is that the US ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, has resigned. Now, there's a lot of speculation going around. What does this mean? What's her next move? What's going to happen? We don't know. But what we do know is that she has been a defender of Israel in the most incredible ways. And we have to trust God that whoever steps into that role, who fills her shoes, will continue to be a defender defender of the Israeli people. This woman has fearlessly declared truth and she has been a beacon of hope and light and life and we need to continue to pray for her. And so on that note, we're going to go to an interview about all of that right now. Let's go. Nikki Haley announcing today that she will leave her post in the administration by the end of the year. Citing uh, term limits, political selflessness, and pointing to the fact that she's been hitting it pretty hard for eight years. Let's not forget six years as South uh, Carolina's governor to his ambassador. Haley said, government officials must know when it's time to step aside. A little while ago, President Trump commending Haley on her performance at the UN. I think he's going to be involved with us for a long time. And he's going to help me also make that final pick. We're going to make the final pick. I want to get somebody really good. I think she's also brought a new level of prestige to that position. That position is, in terms of people wanting it, easier now in a way than it was before. Here now to discuss who might replace former, uh, as her as former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee. Governor, your name was actually tossed out there earlier today. I mean, if you want to accept now, let us know. We can break the news. <laughs> let me assure you, my name is not going to be on that list. If somebody puts it on there, I'm going to go ahead and scrub it off. I'm not looking for a government job right now, but thanks so much for the sentiment. Look, Nikki Haley has done a terrific job in that uh, position. Uh, she served this president and she served this country very admirably. The courage with which she took on uh, the phony uh, Palestinian grievances, the matter in which she pushed back against some of the international nonsense that we as Americans pay for has been absolutely just spellbinding. And I think people have tried to say, well, what's the real reason? I think she gave it to us. 14 years in consecutive public service and she needs some private sector time. I totally get it for her. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. The media always, uh, with the negative speculation, all the time, all the time, and, you know, the hunches and the guesswork that were put out there publicly, uh, you know, if it was any other era, I would say it was irresponsible journalism, but it just seems to be par for the course these days. You know, I did, uh, President Trump did mention, and you, you alluded to it, uh, in that soundbite, he talked about the prestige that she brought back to the position. Earlier, he said that she brought a certain sense of glamour to it. I can tell you, living in New York City, for a long time, it was just, you know, a this big spot that took up a lot of valuable real estate where these where these uh, diplomats ran recklessly through the city, piling up millions of dollars in parking tickets and never being held accountable, but all the time thumbing their nose at America. It's been restored to the place now where it actually has a role in helping us define and to meet this America first uh, role that the, the president is trying to achieve. Well, Nikki Haley did a terrific job of representing the spirit of the president in saying, America's not going to go around apologizing. We're a strong nation. We put America first. We're not going to bow down. We're not going to capitulate to all these pipsqueak nations that want to somehow make us feel guilty because we're prosperous. And I don't know of anyone who's ever been more effective as the uh, UN ambassador than Nikki Haley in simply saying, uh, folks, if you want to criticize the U.S., then maybe we'll quit writing checks to your government. <laughs> Good for her. Thank you for watching Israel Update. If you've been blessed by this show, we would ask you to simply click the red link to donate. All of this is only made possible through your donations. And whether it's live updates from Israel, teachings, missions, and all the other things that we're doing, we can only do this because of you. So thank you for your support. And you can click that red link to give now. Let's go to the show. Hello and welcome to our Israel Update. 
Today is going to be incredible. We've got with us our amazing Israeli correspondent, Dubi Sabo, and he is coming to us live from Jerusalem. Dubi, shalom. Shalom, Christy. Shalom, everybody. How are you doing, Dubs? I'm doing great, you know, considering the circumstances in Israel, which is quite hectic right now, yeah. but I'm doing fine. My daughter just got married two, year, two days ago, so beautiful. we're still very happy. That's beautiful. You know, Dub, speaking about the, it being a hectic situation, what we're going to be focusing on today is the way in which God has supernaturally delivered Israel time and again from her enemies. So what I'm going to ask you about right now is just to sort of summarize for us what's happened in the nation of Israel since the rebirth on May 14th, 1948, right up until now, if you can talk about uh, very just briefly about the different wars that have happened and the way in which Israel has been delivered and the outcomes. Uh, you're an expert about this and so maybe you could just tell me uh, about that. Well, um, you know, the state of Israel literally was born by a declaration of the United Nations in 1947, actually on November 29th, when the United Nations uh, General Assembly uh, voted over a question, should the Jewish people that has been suffering and, ha and about a third of the Jewish people was exterminating in the Holocaust, would the Jewish people have the right to have their own homeland in the land of Israel, the land of their ancestors? And obviously uh, the nations voted in favor and uh, Israel was literally proposed with the partition plan, which we said yes, which meant that there'll be a little bit of the land to the Jews. The vast majority of the land will go to the Palestinians, so-called at a time, the Arabs, and then there'll be some areas that would be international. We obviously said yeah, the Arabs said nay, and they didn't agree, and there was already clashes and wars that started during that time. Then the birth of Israel in May 14th, 1948, Israel decided that we don't want to wait anymore. It's about time for us to actually declare a state when we had only 600,000 people, Jewish people living in the country, surrounded by millions and millions of Arabs' enemies where the rest of the world, and even America said to us, don't declare an independence, but David Ben-Gurion, another David, a name of a great man, decided that he's going to declare the Declaration of Independence. And exactly three hours later, the minute he declared the state, Tel Aviv was bombarded by Egyptian Air Force. All the borders of Israel were attacked by one and a half million regular soldiers of the Arab enemies, five nations surrounding us. We had only 32,000 men, women and children who could bear, bear arms and fight back. But we know that Israel is not fighting alone. We know that God is fighting with us. And after a year, when we lost 1% of the Jewish population of the land, 6,000 people, try to imagine, God forbid, America loses three and a half million people in the war. That would be a revolution. And we lost 1% of our people, but we were able to establish a nation and defeating the Arab nations around us. In the back of me, there is the wall of Jerusalem, the walls of the city of Jerusalem. Within the walls, we had the Jewish quarter, which we couldn't protect, and it fell into the hands of the Jordanian Legion. And many of the Jewish people there were either killed or badly injured or taken into war prison. This was the War of Independence. And ever since then, every minute, we had another story with our enemies around us. If it was 1956, the Sinai War, or if it was 1967, the Six Day War, where Israel literally decided we cannot be suffocated by the Arab's armies that are surrounding us, and we'll take a preemptive action, and we're going to defeat our enemies, and God fought together with us. You know, God doesn't like to do anything on the seventh day. He needs to rest, so it took us only six days to take out all the Arab enemies around us, including the Egyptians, where we took over the Sinai Peninsula, we took over the Golan Heights from the Syrian army, and we took over the entire West Bank and liberated and were able to reunify Jerusalem when we won over the war at the Jordanian Legion. That was 1967. Then through the 70s, in the beginning of the 70s, there were attacks almost everywhere around Israel, just for almost a year and a half. 
We had to send troops over and over again to our borders. We were attacked from multiple, multiple directions until 1973. Exactly on October 6, 1973, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day in the Jewish calendar, at two o'clock after the Jews in the country and in the world were already after almost 22 hours of praying and fasting in the synagogues, just praying God, asking for repentance. We were simultaneously attacked by an onslaught, both from Syria in the north and Egypt in the south. We're very much surprised and within the first day of the war, we lost almost 1,500 soldiers. This was a very tough war. It took us almost four days until we were able to stabilize the lines and launch a preemptive attack again and launch a contra-attack over our enemies, push them over, defeat them, take back the Sinai Peninsula and take back the entire Golan Heights. So it was just a month and a half, but most of the soldiers were actually deployed for almost seven months before they were able to go back home to make sure that we can stabilize our borders after the war of Yom Kippur. But this wasn't the end. Every now and then, there were other fights, other clashes, terror attacks, Katusha rockets all over the land of Israel. And in 1982, after multiple Katusha rockets that were launched into Israel by the PLO, Palestinian uh, 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 terror organization from Lebanon, Israel decided to take the initiative and go into the first Lebanon war. And we had to stay in Lebanon for 18 solid years to try and keep the area safer for Israel not to be attacked again. So in the year 2000, we got out of Lebanon. We said, you'll get peace if we'll get peace. And it was okay for a while, but still terror attacks and clashes. And then again in 2006, we were attacked really by the uh, Hezbollah that are the biggest proxies of Iran. We had to go on another second Lebanon war, which took the lives of many soldiers and civilians again and again and again. So this was the wars and during this period of time, since 1989 until now, actually, we have problems with the, Fal with the Palestinians. We have what we call uprising intifadas. We decided in 2005 to get out of Gaza and give them the chance to give us peace for peace. But in return, we got over 17 and a half thousand rockets launched on our civilians from Gaza and it's still happening nowadays. We have arson kites, we have arson balloons, we have rockets, we have missiles, we have mortars. We stand in multiple attacks, always trying to get some peace but it's not happening. We try to reach our hands for peace, but we don't have a real partner on the other side. So this is, in a nutshell, describing over 24,000 Israeli soldiers and multiple civilians and soldiers that died during the wars of Israel since the beginning of the state. You know, Dubs, everything you're saying, obviously it's so, it's so crazy that that many soldiers have had to give up their lives for this nation of Israel but as you speak you can just hear this thread of the supernatural protection of God over Israel and if we look back at the Old Testament um, you know starting with the book of Joshua when Joshua took over from Moses and the first enemy that they encountered was Jericho and you know a lot of people maybe don't know this, but the walls of Jericho were so thick that they would have chariot races on top of them. And this was one of the most intensive cities that God could have led the people of Israel to, to defeat. It was a massive, massive enemy. But we see from then, right up until now, the supernatural delivering power of God over Israel and God is fighting for Israel. We know the story where the people of Israel marched around the walls. They were told to keep quiet, which seems so anti and counter what you should do in war time. But God didn't, I really believe he didn't want fear and doubt spreading. So he said, just keep quiet. And then when the time came, the trumpets blew, the shout went out, the Shabbat went out and Historically, as we know, the walls of Jericho actually crumbled down and into the earth because if they'd fallen outwards, they would have crushed the people of Israel. And if they'd fallen inwards, they would have crushed all the inhabitants of Jericho. But instead, these giant walls that literally could house chariot races crumbled into nothing 
because of the God of Israel. And as we continue through scripture, when we look at, at Gideon and the way that he defeated the Midianites with 300 men and, you know, sounding a ram's horn and, and lighting a torch. And, you know, they originally had 10,000 soldiers, but God said, no, whittle it down. And it was impossible for them to win that, ba that battle alone. But through the God of Israel, with the God of Israel, they conquered. Where we look at how the angel came into the Assyrian camp and at the hand of one angel, 185,000 Assyrians were slain. When we look at how the four lepers were on their way in, in the book of two kings and they were on their way to, to the camp and, uh, of the enemy and God somehow magnified the sound of their feet and the enemy armies went crazy thinking that they could hear these horses and these chariots coming and maybe God just put these crazy microphones by the feet of these four lepers shuffling and they vacated the camp and Israel got everything back in a day. As we go through scripture really the whole of what we would term the old testament is is a is a story it's it's a historical account of god delivering israel again and again and again and so we see that throughout the bible and now as you've spoken from the get-go there were attacks against Israel and up until now in 2018, there are still these crazy attacks against Israel. But we know that God is fighting for Israel. We know that God is the one where, where the scriptures tell us some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we, Israel, trust in the name of the Lord our God. That's who's fighting for Israel. It's impossible that this nation would exist, that these people would have been gathered from around the world, specifically even after the Holocaust and brought together again as a group of people fulfilling so much prophecy. And we'll talk about that in another show. But it's just so beautiful to see that God is fighting for Israel and all these enemies that at some time or the other in history, you know, they had these empires, whether it was the Midianites or the Hivites or the Hittites or, or the Philistines or whoever Whatever it was, the Persians, the Medes, they came against Israel, but Israel stands, Israel remains, and that is such an incredible thing. Dubes, I want to ask you, we want to talk for a couple of minutes about the, the war of the media against Israel, where you're standing okay. and what you're seeing okay. versus what's actually taking place in Israel. So you're seeing it, but the main news media outlets are not reporting what's actually happening. Let's talk about the media's war against Israel. Yes, well, Christy, you know, I, I live here in Israel and I look at the international media and it's exactly your definition. It's actually a warfare. It's a biased, demonic warfare that is raged over Israel by the international media challenge channels. And it's really challenging to try and find ways to tell our people, our real supporters, the real, the real truth and the real things that are happening here in Israel because every channel you open there is some hidden agenda as Donald Trump is saying there's so much fake news all over the place and it's just really complicated and I'm so happy that here in the House of Destiny with the, our you know Israel partnership we are able to be here where the uh, you know where the rubber meets the road and uh, boots on the ground to be here in Israel to see the things to bring them the real updates to drive to the south to go up north and literally to bring them the truth from the land of Israel I don't know how it's happening but that's exactly what I'm telling you you know the minute that God created the world and created Adam and Eve and wanted to bring good and created them in his image Satan this devil is trying to steal to deceit and to destroy and and that's what we're dealing with and some media channels and some people I don't know how they are taken by by the devil you know he has a, he has a strong power and we we see that even Jesus Christ had to fight 40 nights and 40 days to defeat the devil out of his life on Mount Deptation and to kick him out and actually to go to the righteous way and and we are just in the flesh we're just human being and and there is a big fight but we know that if we trust the Lord God of Israel we will always prevail and that's what we're doing here in this amazing channel we are just pressing in going to every spot every corner flipping every stone to bring the truth forth 
and and that's what we need to do we need to get our audience we need to have our audience our followers to share the good news to share it with the people even sometimes it's not good news it's it's troubling news about wars and things like that but we need our people to actually share it with others so we know how to pray together and strong prayer intercessors you can really really change the events and give more power and more strength to God to perform his amazing miracles for Israel just like in the old times and may we be worthy of the same God that delivered our ancestors from Egypt that delivered us from all the wars from the Amalekites and Midianites may we be worthy of this God's grace that's beautiful, Dubes, and it's it's so true. You know, as as Doobie was saying, our goal here, our mission, is to bring truth where so much is happening in Israel and it's, it's not told, it's not spoken about, it's not broadcast. What our mission is, is to bring you, the viewer, truth about what's taking place. And sometimes it'll be uncomfortable and sometimes it maybe won't be great news like Doobie's saying, but all that does is it can ignite us to pray, to stand together, to be united. Psalm 122, six says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let those who love your city walls prosper. And it is our job as Christians to stand with the nation of Israel, to stand and to say, we bring support. And you know, so many people share so much nonsense on social media but we should actually be looking for truth and sharing that and bringing light where we can into the dark areas where so much is going on I mean I have the the Israeli red alert app on my phone that tells me whenever rockets are are firing because I pray when these things go off although I'm here in California and doobies you know over there in Jerusalem as soon as my app goes off I'm texting him is everything okay how's it going you know it's 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 real time even though we're on different uh, parts of the world, we, we carry Israel in our hearts here at House of Destiny. It's, it's our mission, it's our calling, it's our purpose, and it's one that we're determined to stand and fight for. Um, you know, Kim always proclaimed that Israel is forever, and we believe that. We believe completely in everything that the Bible tells us about the nation of Israel and about the Jewish people. And so just know from, from Doobie and I both, and from everybody here at House of Destiny, what we're wanting to do with this Israel channel is bring you truth in real time. We want to show you what's going on, show you behind the scenes, and we really want to encourage you to, to support us where you can. Um, you know, we obviously, we need that support in order to carry on doing what we're doing. And just yesterday, even Doobie and, 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 and I and some of the guys here were talking about you know, different projects that we're getting involved with in different ways we can sow and give into Israel. And there's so many opportunities that are coming your way where you can sow into something that's eternal and give into something that will have eternal weight and value. So please keep praying, dupes. Christy, you know, I hear what you're saying about the app and it's so valid and true and you're writing to me all the time and I sometimes I just wonder, you know, what's really happening there. But this app is also not very accurate and there's so many other things that are happening, the in-betweens, and this would be our greatest strength. You know, we don't need to put people through other apps where there is, where there is commercials and all the other things that go around these apps. We need them to be connected to our channel will be will have an app will have the channel it will be us and them and we'll bring them we'll burst in on real time we'll bring them the events i'll get in the car together within bali and we're going to film the events and we're going to show them the true and the real angle as opposed to what is edited or what they're trying to show them you know i've been to so many cases here in israel where i've seen what was happening what was really happening for example there was a terror attack on two Two Israeli police officers were sitting just behind me, not far away, at the gate outside of the of the uh, Temple Mountain, and there was a terrorist who came over and shot them dead right there on that spot. So obviously the Israeli police went inside chasing them and retaliated, and then when they were shot inside the Temple Mountain, those people who killed the police officers, they were shot in an Israeli uh, a raid of retaliation, 
the world news started the headlines with three Palestinians were killed on the Temple Mountain, not even mentioning one word what happened, what came first, how they attacked and killed our soldiers. If you were looking with a magnifying glass or maybe with a telescope, you could find somewhere in the small hidden little letters of the article what was happening. But who reads the little small letters? Everybody looks at the headlines. And this is how biased it is. And I was there at the spot and I couldn't, I couldn't because we didn't have the resources then to bring you everything. But now, when we're gonna have our supporters and we're gonna have the resources, we're gonna go to each and every spot where there are things that are connected to us and our beloved friends and Christian people who loves Israel back in the States, because we need your power. You know, there's only 13 and a half million Jews in the world. But there's so many Christians in this world and together we are a big power. When God will see the Judeo Christian unity, that's what God is looking for. And once we're gonna demonstrate this and thicken the bridges between us, I think that even God will do the shift that we need now for these end times to get closer to our beautiful rapture and live in that wonderful kingdom of God. That's awesome, Dubs. I love what you said. And really, um, that's all we've got time for today. But please stay tuned. Keep watching. We're going to be bringing you more and more uh, things directly from Israel. And we are. We're in two locations, one heart in many locations. And so thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Doobie, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we love you and we're so grateful for you. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you, Warriors. We love your support. We do. And so God bless all of you. And until next time, bye-bye.